All right. Um, it is 10 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Developer Diaries number 35. And today, Sean is actually just going to drive and go over some new features of app variables and expressions. And uh, he's going to share his screen and start from there. So I'm going to I'm going to mute myself. Mute. Sean, we don't hear you. We don't hear anyone. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I was I was muted this whole time. <laughs> talking anyhow. Uh, as I was. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to start from the beginning. We'll because we'll edit the uh, <laughs> the recording. <clears throat> okay. So as as Johnny mentioned, um, we're going to show. Um, some new concepts with with app variables. App variables obviously are are, are not new, but um, we're just showing some of the new things you can do with app variables. So I've got this application right now. Let me go to it in App Builder just so we can see it. There are three widgets. We have a form, we have a map, and then we have a uh, an info widget. And this is just uh, maybe I should just show this quickly. This info widget. It's just a utility widget, and I just I just have some you know simple markup in here. I'm just showing an icon and then uh, some text. Okay. And by default, the uh, map is initially hidden. So let's just see what this looks like now before we really do anything with it. Okay, so it's just we just see our map and our utility widget. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is. As I type in this form, so as I type a name, um, I want the title of my map to automatically, you know, swap, you know, to to change its title as I type. Um, and then when I fill out an address, I want this info widget to hide, and I want to show the map widget, and I want it to load the data for it. Okay, so we're going to do all of this with the app variable. So so let's. Let's take this one step at a time. So I'm going to go to back to App Builder, and we're going to go and create some app variables. First one, I'm going to create an app variable called F name for like for first name. I'm going to add one for last name. And then I'm going to add one called form title. So let me uh, let me save that. And form title, I want to. I'm going to put an expression here. Form title is going to be first name plus. I'll do a space last name. Okay. So as these change, this app variable will automatically be updated. So let me go to our form now, and we're going to link these app variables. First thing I'll do is I'll go to general, and I'll set my title to be form title. Nope, oh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to stay in there. So I, I link my form title. Now I want to go to this get field value. So here I can link an app variable to, you know, whatever whatever the value is of that field it'll automatically you know, push that value to the app variable. So I'll make this first name and this last name. Okay, so let's just save this and let's see what we get now. Okay, so you see as I type, that expression is running, it's combining the two, and then it's pushing that out to the title. OK, let's refine this a little bit, because when I when I start it, 
we've got this empty title here and it just, it doesn't look great. So I'm just gonna modify this expression a little bit. I'm going to take, I'm gonna wrap this expression and I'm gonna trim it, remove it for blanks, remove the blanks, or if that evaluates to false, I want enter name and address, okay? So some JavaScript. Let me go out of here, let me save it. And let's see what we get now. I should see that enter name and address, good. And then as soon as I type, then it should start taking over, okay. So that's our, our first little demo here. Um, now, I'm gonna create some more app variables. I'm gonna create an app variable to hold address, city, state, and zip. Are there any questions? You guys can remember, you can, uh, you know, just throw something in the chat if you have any questions on that. Okay, I'm creating new app variables, ADDR, uh, ADDR city, ADDR state, and ADDR zip. Okay. So let me go back and let me link all of those. So I'm going to do the same thing with get. Anything that's typed in address, I want that to go and be pushed out to this address app variable. Same thing for city, state, and zip. Okay, if I run the app now, we're not going to see any difference. Just behind the scenes, those app variables are being um, <clears throat> populated. So I'm going to do a little more first. Well, let me go back to the link. I'm going to make use of this form is invalid. I'm going to set an app variable here. Basically, what this will do is anytime the form is invalid or if it is valid, It'll, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll change that value, true or false, and I'm going to push it to an app variable. So I just want an app variable that I can reference that will tell me whether my form is invalid or not. And, you know, you can see I have, if I go back here, these are all required fields. So right now my form is invalid. Okay. So I'm just going to create an app variable called is form invalid. Okay. And right away, I'll go back and I'll link that general is form invalid. Okay. So what I want to do is as soon as the form is valid, I do not want to show this info widget anymore. I want to show the map. And if the form is invalid, I want to show this. So let's go back to app variables. And I'm going to create one called hide map and another one called show map. Okay. So just scrolling down here to show map. I have this is form invalid. If the form is invalid, I don't want the map to show. So I can just do this. I can just do the opposite condition. Okay. So if form invalid is false, show the map. And then I'm just going to go to hide map and just say the opposite of show map. Okay. Any questions on this so far? I know it's a little, it's a, you know, <laughs> you got to wrap your head around it. Okay. So now let's go link those properties, that hide map, show map, to dictate when these are hidden or shown. So I'm going to go to link for the map first. Hide widget, hide map. Show widget, show map. And then, you know what? I'm also going to refresh the data anytime show map. Anytime we show that map, I want it to refresh its data. Okay, so, and then here, I'm gonna do the opposite. Hide the widget when show map is true, and then show the widget when hide map is true. 
Okay. So let's run this now and see what we get. And I'm just going to put some address, click. There we go. If I were to make the form invalid, like I'll get rid of state. Now this shows. Put back. Okay. Let's um, let's do another uh, mapping. Let's 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 output the address here as a as a title. So I'm going to create a new app variable called map subtitle, and this is going to be an expression. So how do I want that subtitle to look? Well, first, I want the address. Then I'll do a break, break to a new line. Then I want the city with a comma space. Then I want the state. And then I'll add another space. Then I want the zip. Okay. Now I'm gonna map, I'm gonna link that app variable. So title, I'm, I'll put title the same, form title, but then I'll do a subtitle, map subtitle. Okay. So let's see what this does. So we'll run it again. Okay, there we go. And you see that changes. You know, we see it changing on both things, on both titles. Okay. So we're using a combination of, you know, the built-in properties that we, you know, have on these widgets to extract or push information uh, in tandem with app variable expressions. Um, you know, to kind of visually, or, you know, to, to control the entire UI just on the front end, just with, with app variables. So I guess I'll uh, open it up to any questions. All right, well, I guess it's going to be a, it'll be a quick one. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you got something out of that and... Uh, where is, we just got a question. Okay. Where is, where is, is form valid from? Okay. So I created an app variable. I could have named it whatever I wanted. I named it is form invalid. And I went to that form and I clicked link. And under general, one of the widget properties that we can, you know, listen for. And, and when I say listen for, meaning anytime it changes, it'll push it to the app, the value to the app variable that I chose. Um, so automatically, um, if we have on a form, if we have fields that we mark as required, and you can tell that these are marked as required because, you know, I've got this, this little red asterisk. If I were to go in, to the form, which I'll show you. I'll show you how to do that. Um, but it detects if, if all my fields are filled out, then my form is valid. So this would be false. But if at least one of my fields that are required are not filled out, my form's going to be invalid. So, you know, that's happening automatically. It's it's it this this property's changing automatically. And it's saying, oh, you have an app variable to it. Okay, let me set the value of that app variable. And the way, just just in case, you can see my form. So here's my here's my form. You know, I set all of these to required. Okay. And then also, if you had a form helper that is marking a field invalid, an error, it would cause that to change to say it's an error too. So right now, it's invalid. Form is invalid. Now it's valid. Okay. Kind of just toggling between the two. Okay. 
where can we learn the basic of JavaScript and the expressions? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, probably just any any basic JavaScript tutorial. Um, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's there's so many. I don't I don't really have one to suggest really. Um, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't I don't know of one that's you know particularly better than other ones but you know typically you know i still look this stuff up online when i'm trying to do something if it's not off the top of my head in javascript you know i'll look up like you know how do i do a replacement or you know there's so many resources online for javascript um, but for the expressions it would pr it's pretty much going to be the it's a small amount that you would have need to understand right the yeah, I mean, you know, and you're you're doing expressions typically because you 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 know you're you're comparing values against other app variables, um, so, you know, or you're concatenating app variables, and in that case, you know, it's like JavaScript arithmetic, plus minus, you know, divided by, so it's it's, but I don't really have a good. I don't know of a particular resource to point to for, you know, JavaScript. I think there's a lot of, probably a lot of good ones online. Uh, Rob posted uh, one about w3schools.com, which is a good one. Okay, but I, I would also recommend uh, if, if people are familiar with ChatGPT, I mean, ChatGPT, especially ChatGPT4, if you have access to that, is extraordinarily good at writing JavaScript uh functions and uh you know script segments you just tell it exactly what you're trying to do in plain language and it will give you the javascript or if you've tried to create some javascript and it's not working you can paste that javascript into chat gpt and say what's wrong with this javascript and it will tell you yeah i saw that question um and and the answer is no you do not have to have another app variable like here i'll create an app variable called um um form subtitle let's say let's see hopefully i don't and uh i don't know can i do this <laughs> let's try it new date um so general let's see mm. You know, I think that's maybe I got something wrong. Um, let's see, 50 times 10. What does this do? Uh, I am, I, I would expect that to work actually. Form subtitle, 50 times 10. Let me just see something really quick. I didn't... Hold on. Maybe we got another issue. Form subtitle is 500. It's okay. So it's... Oh, it's like that mapping's not... Did I... Did I not save it? Let me just make sure. Okay. One second. I'm going to switch this. Maybe we got an issue. We might have an issue with the subtitle in that form. There we go. So to answer your question, no, you know, you, you it, it does not have to, you know, um, yeah, reference. Yeah, it could be a combination too. Hopefully that answered your question. Oh, okay. So info budget. Yeah. So, you know, we had a need. This is so this has nothing to do with, you know, app variables. Um I created this little placeholder widget here and, and and I didn't want to have to create a data source 
you know, to, to do this. And I, you know, I didn't have some specific widget that's going to hold data. I just kind of wanted this placeholder here. Um, so we have this widget. I'm just going to pretend I'm adding a new one. Utility and info widget. And I got to give it a name. I'm just going to call it testing. And here I could put my own, you know, HTML markup in here. You know, you're right. Or I could just do, you know. Um, I have access to my app variables as well, you know, or if I wanted to do JavaScript, it's going to clear this, you know, I, I could also do JavaScript as well. So if I look at this one, let me uh, move this, this info widget, if I go to settings, you know, I just have, I put in a couple HTML tags to just give that effect that I wanted. I used our our map icon and I, you know, made it really large, uh, you know, and then I just put some text and that's, and that's what we see here. And the reason you have the info widget is you want to give the ask information or show information. You don't have a back end, you don't have a data source behind it. And also you can add buttons and behaviors to that. So actions could be like for confirmation, uh, you put your text out there and then you have specific buttons added to that utility widget that do specific things with no data source. Uh, any other questions? Just getting this back to how it was. Um, all right well hope you guys get something out of it thank you and we'll talk to you next time